Hello, I'm back. It's been six years since I last talked about Eurovision. The last video, I believe, was me giving a review of Rhythm of Love uh, by Aliona, who actually didn't go to Eurovision. Uh, she actually ended up changing her song to Soleo. But I feel that I should go back to commentary. I started right around the same time that other vlogs started with Eurovision. And they pretty much escalated to a higher level and I'm still behind. I'm actually still recording from the same computer. And I actually wanted to discuss yesterday's grand final. I'm only going to discuss the final. I might make a little note about the semifinals, but it's just a general review of the show just because I haven't seen a Eurovision this amazing in the longest time. I actually have watched all of them. Um, you may believe me or not. Um, but I have, I used to have a lot of free time. So on YouTube, you actually can find every single Eurovision video is about the 10 top things that I noticed that were great about the final. If you have any other ones, please leave your comment. The first one is the opening. The opening was just amazing. If you actually think about it, it is sort of a unification. Basically, Netta is bringing everyone to Israel and that's exactly what happened. I believe that, you know, she arrives in the plane, everyone comes, the Parade of Nations, they keep doing it. I love the tradition. They really started in 2013 with Sweden. In reality, it goes back to 1983, where Germany, when they hosted, they announced everyone. Everyone joined in, and they were all on the same stage for one second, well, a couple of minutes, while the introducer, or while the host, uh, welcomed everybody. And they did it before that, I believe in 1963, the United Kingdom, they did say, this is so-and-so representing so-and-so country, welcome. So it's really nice that they're keeping that tradition, I really loved it. Also the fact that they had all these past artists, uh, they had Dana International sing Tel Aviv and also Diva, which transitioned into the welcoming of the countries. Obviously Netta opened uh, with Toy which is the second time we heard the winning song uh, from prior year. Usually they just play it once and that's it. I'm very glad that they did it more than once. Additionally, we had Ilanit. Ilanit uh, was the first representative from Israel in 1973. I believe she ranked fifth place. And it's actually one of my favorite Eurovision entries. Uh, I listen to it constantly. 1973, I believe she was the first one also was the first one to have a female conductor uh back in the day when we had the orchestra and it's just absolutely beautiful and then it concluded with navat singing golden boy that was amazing because golden boy is the song that brought israel back to the final uh israel had had a pre since 2011 up until 2014 they were failing to make it to the final up until they started changing the format and 15, 16, 17, and 18, and obviously 19, they've always made it to the final and they've done great. The second point I would like to be was the staging. The staging, they usually announce it, but you don't really get to experience the staging up until you actually see it. Uh, usually I watch the rehearsal videos and you don't really experience it until the shows. Usually you first see it in the semifinals and I believe the, the staging was just amazing. Israel did create that atmosphere that the artists should be the focus. I believe everything worked. I actually really liked the stage. Also, I really appreciated the fact that they were putting the flags there. That everyone was transferring and it became the flag and the flag to appear on stage right to, before they introduced the actual artist. That was great. That was the second thing that I really appreciate from the final and the semifinals that could actually go in through because the semifinals did that as well. The third point is the hosts appreciated them specifically because they actually were really, they were funny, they weren't that awkward, they actually transitioned pretty well, they communicated everything rather well, I believe they were rather well rehearsed, I haven't seen a good host like this since Petra Mide and Mansur Melo, they did also a good job at hosting Eurovision in 2016. Um, last year too, uh, I, I really liked the Portuguese host, the four women. They were, I believe they were amazing. I've seen many Eurovision hosting and the hosting keeps getting better um, and better. I, I believe they try to entertain the people, welcome the people, and they do a really good job at catering to the artists and everything. My favorites this year were actually, and I'm just going to mention a, a few of them. 
but my initial favorite since the long run, since they released their songs and I've been supporting them pre-Eurovision, pre-rehearsals, rehearsals, post-rehearsals, post and during the final, which happened to be um, Netherlands, Italy, Cyprus, Spain, Malta, and North Macedonia. Those songs captivated me. I think that these countries actually gave a good show to Europe so these are personally I don't mean that they really are but they're personally the fourth best thing that happened to the show this year and on that note the fifth thing is they were great qualifiers I watched the semifinals and I would take notes uh, during it to see who would make it or not and everyone that I predicted even if they weren't my favorite song at the time or before just based on performance they actually made it so I think that this year we had quality songs uh, semi-final two unfortunately had songs that were for example there's only 10 that can make it and that semi-final had 19 18 songs I'm sorry and 15 could have easily made it so um, but regardless if those other five countries would have been there I believe that it would have still been an amazing show now the sixth best thing that ever happened to this contest to yesterday I have to say is Eleni Fureda she is one of the most amazing artists that I have experienced uh, watching this contest I've heard her music um, from the international song contest she actually represented Greece two times amazing songs I still listen to them um, I still have them in my playlists and then she was chosen for Cyprus last year and I was excited because I knew of who she was and the music that she brings and then Fuego came out and I said Cyprus has to win. Uh, I was one of the first people to actually say that. I haven't publicized so I have no proof but I kept supporting Cyprus. I shared Cyprus. I shared her videos everywhere, all my social media, everything and then she actually got second place um, which it was a bit of a disappointment for me. I did prefer if she won. However, uh, like she said it, getting second is just as winning Eurovision. And she has. She performed Dancing Lasha Tumbai, which is another Eurovision legend song. And she did an amazing job. Out of the four best ones, I have to take Eleni Fure, that she her dance performance, which is an amazing dancer. And she basically made Dancing Lasha Tumban her own song. And I actually want her to release that version because I would be willing to listen to it nonstop. I actually watch her video constantly. And I was very excited to see that a tear came out almost out of my eye just because she performed again and she's a Eurovision legend. So kudos to Eleni Fureda being such a professional and an amazing artist and I think it's one of the biggest artists that we currently have in this era to be in the presence of Eurovision. I think there's a lot more for her to come and I think that at one point she is going to be the artist that everyone's going to talk about to say oh wow she was in Eurovision um, and I am so excited that she's a part of it. And the seventh thing actually goes right after the fact is hallelujah i actually love the 1979 eurovision song contest it's actually one of my favorite ones even the background had the background decoration that they had in 1979 and it had conchita worst mansarmela eleni fureira berka serdushka and gali atari appear to sing hallelujah together literally brought it here like i was pretty much Balling just because that was so beautiful and personally I love that Eurovision 1979 Eurovision when you just watch it from the beginning till the end it's one of the best and that moment just made it for me and my sister my sister and I were like hugging each other and we were crying just because it was so beautiful she knows how much I love the 1979 Eurovision to be brought back to life um, and I think that was actually really good even for the Eurovision fans if you've been watching Eurovision for so many years you should definitely would have actually had a little bit of nostalgia because they made I was back in 1979 but we had Conchita, Mans, Eleni and Berka there um, so that was really great now the eighth best thing is the jury vote the jury vote this year was amazing North Macedonia take it easy I actually am so excited for Tamara Tamara I supported Tamara back in 2008 uh, so Back in 2016 and 17 and 
um, last year Macedonia has sent really good songs. I actually really did appreciate their presence in the contest. Uh, one of my favorite ones was Dance Alone. I listened to that till this day, and I'm actually very glad that she was there. I was following her Instagram, and I saw that she was sharing videos of Madonna singing. But uh, Mara to that, um, Tavesco was actually quite amazing. She is an amazing vocalist, and I absolutely, watching her perform is actually one of the most beautiful things that we actually got graced this year. And I'm very happy that the juries, that the international jury saw that. Now, the ninth best thing this year is the new thing this year and actually i was a very vocal against it i didn't i wasn't very happy with the fact that they were going to give the points um in a very different order because i thought it also took away from the the fact that the televote is actually another set of points so giving from down up made sense to kind of appreciate the fact that we're not actually seeing the 12 points that certain countries gave other countries so when you get the top 10 voted you actually get to see okay so your 10th place your ninth place so these 10th 9th 8th and 7 countries actually do appreciate the fact that they were voted and ranked that well because sometimes it's not the same countries that were ranked in the jury vote. However, it did make it more exciting. It was nerve-wracking. I was nervous the whole time. The televote till the end because Sweden actually won the, t the jury vote and they were the last ones to to get their points and that made it very very nerve I was very nervous and I'm pretty sure everyone else was everyone was I was shaking I can I was holding my sister's hands and I was like nervous because I was rooting for the Netherlands thought for a second the Netherlands was gonna get second and fortunately they did not they won very I'm also still very mixed about um, getting the first place because technically North Macedonia only got 50 points and Sweden got 93 points they were significantly low obviously Norway who was lower in the jury votes got sent up because they won the televote so it's still a mixed feeling it definitely does make it more exciting uh, I think that one day uh, your vision might give someone a heart attack um, knock on wood that it doesn't but at the same time, um, it also they should also rehearse better. I think they gave Malta 20 points and they showed her face. I was actually supportive of Malta and I, when I saw her face, also my sister, we got excited thinking that, oh my goodness, she did better, but they just gave her 20 points and that's just sad to see her face. Same with Czech Republic. There was no point in showing their face if they got significantly low points. You are either going to get really disappointing reactions or kind of like oh, okay thanks um i understood for north macedonia because she was up there perhaps for the following years they should just show the scoreboard rather than the person and then they just show the person who wins if they wanted to continue with this because at the same time even sweden looked disappointed that he only got 93 points that's a pretty low set of points when other countries got two th 200s and 100 points and they just simply didn't get the support that they needed however i still think that was the best part of the night in terms of the ninth thing now before i get to my 10th i have some honorable mentions like i mentioned i think that spain deserved more spain i was dancing i had the spanish flag i was waving it i was listening lo que eres and he definitely deserved more he definitely shouldn't have gotten i mean i knew that he was gonna get low points in the jury vote but not seven points not last place he was on point his voice was amazing he was running around and he was still singing they should appreciate that because not many artists can do that at the same time um the 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 honorable mention is that his performance was just on point and it was amazing and that he deserved more and i i'm mentioning miki because he wanted to go to eurovision he made it to eurovision with an amazing song it was hype it's the only hype song that y this year and he was able to only get a couple of votes in the televote which i actually was surprised as well i thought people more were more likely to be excited but hey um they did get 12 points from portugal so good luck uh, good job mickey because at the same time uh, even though we couldn't get to see you cheer on your 12 points, you did reserve them and you earned it because everyone in Portugal supported your song. And here too, we, we could have voted, we could have done that too. 
Another honorable mention is Madonna. A lot of people have mixed feelings about it. People were making fun of her because of the auto-tune. People were not very happy with the fact that she sang an old song. However, I have to ma mention her as an honorable mention because she is still one of the biggest pop artists in the history of this world. She is huge. If you say Madonna, everyone knows who she is. So for someone so mainstream to show up at Eurovision, I think that's a big deal because it gives Eurovision more attention. And I think that it deserves more attention and the respect that it needs i actually talk about your vision all the time and no one really cares sometimes and it's such a bummer unless you're european so the fact that madonna was there i don't think it's gonna make it more mainstream but at least for the fact i think it's honorable mention also because she gave really inspiring words to ensure that everyone is a winner and it's true everyone there worked hard everyone there was from the beginning and i those words i was clapping because it's true no matter if you ranked last if you ranked here if you ranked first third third second whatever everyone there was a winner um just for the fact that they're representing their own country the results you know there's always has to be an official winner but i think that everyone there was everyone did their best everyone was amazing the one last thing that i may have to say that may not be honorable is the situation with iceland iceland showed their support for the palestinian now i don't know too much about the situation in israel and i do not want to comment something that i'm not well versed and i don't want to take a side of something that i'm not well versed however with that being said the situation there i know is controversial so Hatari, the band or the group from Iceland, did mention that they were going to do something political, and that was the most that they did. I'm glad that that was the most that they did. It it was controversial in itself, and the EBU reference group has to take some um, decision based on that. And I hope they don't penalize the country. Perhaps something has to be done. Um, I know a lot of people want to ban Iceland, but I don't think the country should be responsible for the actions of the representative. Um, I know that they were happy with the song and they wanted to send something new and different and bold, and it worked for them. They made it to the final, but I don't think the country, the citizens, because they might be just as uninformed as me. Um, and who knows? Um, I just wanted to mention that it's not an honorable mention because it's not an honorable thing but it's also something to mention that it happened and the last but definitely not le least is the win the win is the best thing that has happened in your vision in my in my sense because for the first time my favorite song actually won uh in the last 10 years i actually really supported non-stop uh, alexander ryback um for norway and i was very happy that he was winning um I was very worried for the Netherlands this year because he didn't have a landslide win but that's because the songs were much better in 2009 there was not that much competition except from Iceland and Azerbaijan who actually ended up getting second and third this year anyone could have easily taken it because they were they all did an 